Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us receive a King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven.
when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. Yeah. 
Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel of the Lord said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby laying in the manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Hope has come. Love has come. Joy has come, peace has come, Christ has come. Would you stand with us as we sing?
Christmas, everyone. It is good to see you this afternoon. Have you ever noticed how a baby can have a strange power over your life? Like you can take a baby and you can set it in the middle of a room with a whole bunch of adults who are having really mature conversations and all of a sudden the conversations just turn into, oh, look at what they just did. Look at the smile on their face and everybody's attention is just on a baby. The biggest Men in a room can be turned into like little teddy bears when a baby is put into the middle of a room. It's amazing to see that happen. Or, or, or maybe when a baby cries. If you're holding a baby in your arms and a baby is screaming and crying, you have a reaction, right? For, for some of you, it's, okay, how do I solve this and help the baby to just... Settle down and be okay. How do I meet this baby's need? For others of you, you're, you're sitting there and you're like patting the baby a little bit harder and a little bit harder and you're going, please be quiet, please be quiet, please be quiet. You're driving me crazy. You can feel the tension building in your shoulders when that starts to happen. And others, like if it was in church right now and you had a baby crying, there would be that moment as a parent where you're thinking, please don't let anybody know it's my kid crying right now. Please don't let anybody know it's my kid crying. And you're almost this level of embarrassment that's going on. I uh, remember when our firstborn Carter uh, was, was uh, coming into this world. And after 16 hours of labor that Shannon went through, I was exhausted. I mean, she was exhausted too, but like it was draining for me after those 16 hours of labor. And I remember how stressed out I was. I remember thinking to myself, like, how are we going to pay all these bills? And I am in way over my head as I am looking to uh, raise this baby. And, and then I remember the doctor giving Carter to me and me holding Carter in my arms. And suddenly all the stresses and all the fears and anxiety just kind of disappeared and faded into the background as I held this baby in my arms. And whether it's your own child or whether it's someone else's child, there is a power that a baby can have over your life. There's something that changes in you when you are holding a child in your arms. Think about those moments when you're holding a child who's sleeping. And you have that child in your arms and you look down and you see the peacefulness in that child's face. And there's just something about peace that comes over you in that moment. Maybe a little bit of jealousy saying, I wish I could sleep like that. Or, or those moments where the child looks up at you and looks into your eyes and smiles. And you recognize they're smiling because they see you. And it's like there's only two people in the entire room. It's you and that child in that moment. There's something that comes alive in you in those moments where time just seems to stand still and all of the frustrations and stresses of life seem to fade into the background and you have this sense of hope and joy and peace all over again. And for the next few minutes, I want to invite you to take a breath from every stress that you are facing in your life right now. 
And I want to invite you to take a breath and to spend some time looking into the face of a baby who was born 2,000 years ago. And so would you just pray with me for a moment as we start this time together. Father, I recognize that in this place right now, there are many of us who are weary. We are physically tired, emotionally tired. Our souls are weary. Maybe we've lost hope. Maybe we have no joy right now. God, would you, in these next few minutes, help us to see the wonder of this baby named Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. If you're going to look into the face of this baby named Jesus, you need to acknowledge that he was real. You, you may be here and there's a chance that you don't necessarily believe this whole Christmas story. That, that you think it's all just big religious uh, 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 fairy tale that we are all gathering around. And you think it's kind of silly to you that we would do, make a big deal about a baby born 2,000 years ago. And, and, and that's okay if you're in that place. There is a lot of people, there are a lot of people who are asking the same questions. Did Jesus ever really exist? But I want to just encourage you to, to understand that there is more historical evidence for the existence of Jesus than there is for any other religious founder. There is more evidence for the existence of Jesus than for most of the political rulers of Rome 2,000 years ago. Jesus was real. The evidence shows us that Jesus was real. And if you're going to look into the face of this baby and you're going to acknowledge he's real... You have to be able to also set aside many of the pictures that you have in your mind about this Jesus. Maybe you grew up going to Sunday school and you have pictures in your mind of what Jesus is like. You remember coloring pictures or seeing cartoons and you, you, you had this image of what Jesus was like. And, and I just want to say Jesus was not a white baby with blue eyes. He was born a Jew in the Middle East. He, he probably had darker skin. He was born into a world where 70% of the population lived in poverty, including him. He didn't walk around with nice clothes that, that would make everybody attracted to him. As a matter of fact, if you were a family in that time, you would likely pay more than half of your income in taxes. If you happened to own a home during that time, it was usually a one-room home that had an upper floor and a lower floor. And the lower area is usually where uh, the stalls were kept for the animals. The town that you would live in actually would, would kind of stink and kind of smell. Because what would happen is people would take the sewage from their homes and they would bring them out and they would dump sewage down the middle of the street so that the sewage wasn't staying in their homes. Jesus lived in a village that had no real prominence. There was nothing really much to it. As a matter of fact, there was probably only a few hundred people who actually lived in this village. There's, there's nothing really remarkable about this baby. And even this story that I'm telling you right now, there's nothing inherently remarkable about this story yet. Because billions of babies in all of human history have been born in an anonymous way, living in the middle of nowhere. What makes this story remarkable is that Jesus chose to be born into this environment. The Bible says to us that when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son. That when God looks at all of human history at just the right moment, in just the right place, at just the right time, God would send Jesus into this world. That rather than God waiting for us to figure out how to be good enough to work our way up to him, that God would look down at us and he would see our state of brokenness. And God, instead of waiting for us to come to him, God would come to us. He would come to our mess, to our darkness, to our stress, to our brokenness, to our sinfulness. Jesus did not look for a way to avoid the mess of the world. Jesus became one of us. In fact, Jesus himself would actually say that he came down to earth from heaven. Something else that distinguishes him from every other child that's been born. See, every child that's been born starts their life on this earth. But Jesus, Jesus existed before he was born. He comes down to us from heaven, a place where there is only hope, where there's only peace, where there's only joy. 
where love is perfect, where there's no such thing as COVID. There's nothing that makes you feel sad or anxious. A place where there is constant pleasures. Jesus left all of that for you. One writer put it like this, on numerous occasions, history has witnessed a baby become a king. Only once, however, has a king become a baby. The story of this baby that we're celebrating is amazing because Jesus chose you over the comfort of heaven. And he invites you to choose him. In John chapter 1, verse 10, we get a picture of some of the responses all of us can have to Jesus. You see, Jesus invites you to choose him, but you have to decide what you're going to do with that. You have to decide what you're going to do with the message and the story and the life of Jesus. If he was real and he was a baby who was born 2,000 years ago, and he lived and he taught all the things that the Bible says he taught us, then you have to make a decision what you're going to do with that. In John chapter 1, verse 10, it tells us that he was in the world and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. You, you can decide to, if you want to, you can just ignore Jesus. You can go about your life like he doesn't really exist. He's not a big deal. And the Bible teaches us that Jesus, the creator of the world, came into the world and people didn't even recognize him. There was nothing special about this man. There was nothing that screamed success story. But people come and they decide that they are going to just not know him. And then verse 11, it says, he came to his own and his own people did not receive him. You can ignore Jesus, but you can also just reject him. It says that he came into this world and his own people did not even want to receive him. They didn't want to accept what he said was truth and real. The fact that Jesus would say things 2,000 years ago that actually still rub people the wrong way today. That even today we get upset about things that Jesus would say. Like, for example, Jesus would make exclusive claims 2,000 years ago. He would say things like, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to God except through me. Immediately, Jesus separates himself from every other religion. And he says, the only way for you to know God is through me. And even today, many people have a hard time swallowing that kind of a statement. You see, you cannot just look at Jesus as being a good moral teacher because either everything he said is true or he was just a lunatic. So what are you going to do with Jesus? And then in verse 12 it says this, but, and if you're from forward, you know how much I love the word but in the Bible. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. That you can choose Jesus, and when you choose Jesus, you are given the right to become God's child. There's this picture here in this verse that all of us start out in a place where we are separated from God. We are not part of his family. But if we choose Jesus, if we choose to believe in Jesus, and we choose to trust Jesus with our life and follow Jesus, this baby born in a manger 2,000 years ago who would die on a cross for you, if you choose to trust him, you get to be called a child of God. You get to become part of God's family and all the blessings and all the good things that exist from being part of God's family are yours. A baby was born so that more people could become children of God. The most important question that you are ever going to answer in your life is what are you going to do with Jesus? It's the one question that has eternal consequences and eternal rewards and blessings. And many of us have heard this over and over again at Christmas 
and Easter services, and we've made a decision in our life to choose Jesus. But so many times life goes on and we get busy and distracted and we have so many other things going on that call for our attention and we forget about choosing Jesus. And while, while that moment where you received Jesus made you God's child, we easily lose perspective, don't we? Here's what I've learned. That all of us need to keep choosing Jesus every day. Every day we need to wake up and keep choosing Jesus. And how do I know that? Because think back to the last year. Think back to the last 12 months. How many times in the last 12 months have you been challenged with feeling a sense of hopelessness? How many times have you been angry or anxious or depressed how many times have you been overwhelmed with stress? And there is little joy and there is little hope and there is little love in your life. And the Bible teaches us this, that we are to be a people who look to Jesus. That we keep fixing our eyes on this baby who was born in a manger. We keep fixing our eyes on Jesus because he's the author and he's the perfecter of our faith. And when you look to Jesus every day, you will find rest for your soul. I have met so many people that are just weary right now. And when you look into the face of this baby, you will find rest for your soul. Hope will arise because you know that God is not finished writing the story. When you look into the eyes of this baby, peace can fill your soul because you know that God himself is present with you. When you look to Jesus and you choose Jesus every day, joy can overflow inside of you because in those moments you will be reminded that God is for you. And when you look to Jesus, love can stir in your heart because you are going to remember and recognize again how deeply loved you are by God. I'm going to ask the worship team to come on back out on the stage. Earlier this week, things were going really crazy for uh, me. I was having one of those days. I was tired. I was cranky. I did not have a whole lot of hope and peace and joy. And I finished working, and I pulled out of the parking lot here at the church and, and uh, turned onto the road, and I was just, yeah, I was having one of those moments. And I turned on the radio, and when I turned on the radio, there was a song that came on the radio that we are about to sing. And as that song came on the radio, it was like God was saying to me, Kirk, take a breath and exhale. And look to Jesus. And something amazing happened. When I chose Jesus in that moment, all those other things just kind of faded into the background. And hope started to rise up again. And joy started to rise up again. And peace started to rise up again. And so I want to challenge you with something. Earlier on when you came in, you were given a candle. And if you are in this place today and you decide today that once again you need to choose Jesus to just rest in him, then as we sing this song, I invite you to let your light represent your decision to choose Jesus today. Let's sing this song together.
Unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness forevermore. service. Uh, on behalf of the elders of Forward and all of our staff, I just want to wish you and your family a Merry Christmas in these crazy days that we're living in. And uh, may God's uh, peace surround you and your family during this season. I want to, we're going to sing one final song before we leave, but I want to pray this scripture verse over you uh, today. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may be a people who abound in hope. Amen. Merry Christmas. through the silence with glory in the highest the hope of all creation resting in his mother's arms the song on the horizon ringing through the heavens the long awaited savior to set the captives free. Come to set the captives free. Come set us free.
If you're searching, and if you need healing. 